Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Deathblade, where I am going to give you guys a definitive guide for beginners on how to get started in PvP. Now, I've the game just lost, uh, launched at NA, and I've probably played over 100 arena games in the span of four days, and I have learned a ton about Deathblade. So I'm going to tell you guys what I've learned, um, how to get started, and then I will probably update this again once Ranked uh, comes out in a month or so. And there will be a ton of more videos on that. But if you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. We are now making videos for Lost Ark because Lost Ark is the hottest new MMO on the market. And if you guys want to talk about it, come stop by my Twitch. Link in the description. We stream almost every single day. So uh, yeah, let's get right into the video. Okay, so let's talk about the Deathblade uh, skills and the Book of Coordination, kind of what you, the setup that you want to get going when you get into any type of PvP. So when you get into PvP, they're actually going to give you presets that you could set beforehand before you actually get into the arena. Uh, real quick, just to get to there, you have to go to Character, then you go to Book of Coordination, and it pops this up. Now, all you got to do is copy and paste this. And then what I recommend is as you get used to the class and what everything's doing, you kind of adjust it as you see fit, because that's kind of what I did. I would take these uh, these stats, one crit, 249 domination, swiftness. Honestly, I found this online. It's been working phenomenal, and I've checked out other guys. It seems this is what like kind of the standard is. So I would just run this for arena. Don't worry about it too much. Skill tuning, this is where your abilities are going to go with, on your hotbar. As you can see, my hotbar is different than this hotbar right now, because this is my PvE spec gonna do here is go through all the abilities that i use for my pv spec and then i'll kind of talk about i'll go through every single ability in this tree and i'll tell you which ones i use and which ones i don't use which ones you can use and then we'll go into combos so if you're interested in the, only the combo section timestamps down below just skip there but if you want to go in depth with the abilities we'll talk about them here Okay, so what I'm going to do in this section real quick is just run down each ability and for the builds that I'm going to be using and how you're going to want to max it out. Uh, specifically for threes. This is my threes build. For instance, I don't use Void Strike. I know some people use Void Strike because you can combo it into, I think, a Moonlight Sonic. Same thing with the, you can combo it into a Upper Slash. I don't use Void Strike. There's the same thing with Headhunt. This is our literally our only stun that we have in our kit. I don't use it in 3v3s great for 1v1 so right so keep that in mind this is a 3v3 build that i'm going to go over today as well as i want you guys to realize that i kind of consider it like league of legends because that's the space that i come from i played yasuo in uh in diamond as an 80 carry and for me it was i realized you're not always gonna it's 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 not like what's meta what do you need to do you kind of just need to read abilities see how you like to play and then accordingly pick what's good now there are things that are just like you should just do every single time. That is a thing. But there are some variations that you could do with some abilities. Uh, like Death Sentence and Void Strike and Headhunt, Earth Cleaver. There's a bunch of things that you can actually do in terms of PvP and what you want to play. With a couple variations uh, in between. Okay, so let's get right into it. So let's start out with, uh, with a Surprise Attack. And how I'm going to do this, guys, is I'm going to talk about the rune. And then on screen, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Maybe a couple examples from Arena. As well as uh, you will also see on screen the proper runes that you should be taking. As of right now, you can see Surprise Attack. It's, you know, these three. But that's how the format of this section of the guide is going to go. So Surprise Attack is a great ability. Do note that it loses its uh, its super armor in PvP, so it no longer has uh, Paralysis immunity. Uh, this ability is great because I love using it to either escape from melees that are coming to me when I don't have my dodges available or any other movement abilities, or I use it as a follow-up engage to just close the gap, um, or both. There's times where there's a ranged target that I'm looking to get on while a melee is coming at me, and I'm able to peel myself off of the melee target while then also advancing myself towards the ranged target. So, great ability. Use it in tangent with uh, Dark Axle uh, and Upper Slash, and you'll be fine. Now we're going to move on to Upper Slash as our second ability. There's not too much to this one. It's basically your bread and butter. Uh, you're going to use this anytime you want to bait out a dodge or set up something for your bigger abilities. This is some of your only hard CC that you have. So you're either going to look to set up your teammates or you're going to look to set up yourselves. What I mean by baiting dodges is everyone gets a dodge out of being downed, but it's on usually a long cooldown. And if you can catch people out, uh, into this ability and start doing some damage to them or a teammate doing damage to them They're gonna be forced to roll out in which case you can then you, uh, you or a teammate can then use other CC to follow up into a bigger combo um, Now if you have already gotten that dodge you would be using this ability to 
uh, just basically fuck them up and set up your combo. So pretty straightforward ability. Uh, just use it appropriately. Okay, so let's move on to our next ability. It's Spin Cutter. Spin Cutter is one of our primary movement abilities. Um, I actually like using Open Weakness just to add, you know, the debuff uh, onto other party members if I actually manage to hit anybody. Uh, wide Angle is also good if you just want a bigger radius, but this is only... We're only going to be putting one point into it. Uh, spin Cutter is mostly used as a way of escaping. Uh, what's nice about it is you can actually change the direction for the second cast so you can go up you can go down you can go you can flee then go back in you can use it i use it mostly to dodge abilities or just run away when i'm low like let's say that's the last 20 seconds you're up by one and threes you gotta live you gotta be using all of your movement abilities to just run away and live okay because they're gonna make a mistake by trying to tunnel vision you um this is one of the best abilities to get away or re-engage just reposition this ability needs to be thought of as repositioning rather than damage damage secondary rep repositioning first and that's about it keep it simple all right going into our next ability we have dark axle which is basically how we're going to start off every single fight if we are the ones engaging or we just need to close the gap right so a dark axle is our six meter forward lunge uh as you can see on screen it's just a flip over it also puts you um it knocks the, the foes away but also can sometimes push you behind them uh it just depends on the angle that you come at them so you know play with the ability get used to it like i said i use high axle for the extra mobility upper axle will give you a ton more damage this this is actually one of those abilities where it significantly changes depending on what tier three you take um literally just look for engages with this that's all i mean it's also used any type of mobility if you need to move or reposition this is the ability you're using once again same thing as spin cutter Movement first, damage second. You shouldn't really think of this as a, unless you're using upper axle, but this isn't really something you're using as like damage. This is your engage and, es and one of your escape tools, repositioning. De uh, Deathblade's all about your positioning and honestly, the mobility that you're given, so abuse it. Uh, and that's about it for Dark Axle. Okay, so next ability, let's talk about Death Sentence, which is the one that I use. Now, this is a optional ability. I think all the other abilities that I've mentioned so far are kind of required uh, for the build. For uh, no matter what build you go, this is probably the first optional one, but it's my preferred for 3v3. So it's Death Sentence. The big thing about this one, and it comes in the, uh, the skill tree, is Cold Zone and Explosion. Cold Zone just literally does what it does. It's a Cold Zone, adds a splite AoE dot after the explosion goes off. Um, it also adds a slow. Now, explosion, like literally explosion, will increase your radius by 30%, give you an extra stomp, and it adds a little bit of extra CC onto this. How do I use this ability? When all of my other cooldowns are down, or I need to follow up on a teammate, uh, I'll usually use this to chain CC, or just cause chaos. What do I mean by causing chaos? So in a 3v3, you can zone people with abilities, like that is a thing. So this is an ability that actually has amazing zone potential. You could fight on the floor of the of the AoE that you leave behind. Um, this, this ability is really good in threes, but I think it's only good in threes. I think if you're going to go for the 1v1s, you switch this out for headhunt or just something in uh headhunt which is your stun or just something different i love this ability in threes you can see on screen how it's used play around with it it's actually one of my favorite looking abilities and i think it's completely and so badass uh so just enjoy it play around with it feel how it feels and you could use it a lot of different scenarios but uh you whether adding it to your combo uh just using it as poker zoning this has a lot of different uh uses to it uh, but do be careful because it's kind of, it's a decently long cooldown at 18 seconds all right, now let's talk about the bread and the butter of this build. Moonlight Sonic. This is your one of your biggest, if not biggest, hitting ability. Main reason you have to get this. You, you actually have to go this. You could try out the, the top tree, but I mean, I think this is just default better. So go Fist of Darkness, Sustain Enhancement. This is what makes this ability so good. It's combined with Shade Sonic. So what does this do? It makes it, it makes the attack double the amount of time because it becomes a charge it increases its damage but then when paired with shaded uh shade sonic you get more attacks and more damage so you're basically giving yourself 120 percent extra damage and if you can cc a target long enough and make sure that their dodge is on cooldown this ability can hit everybody on their team incredibly hard now in 1v1s this is part of your combo this is this is one of those abilities that you want to make sure you're always landing on combo if you get cc'd while using this ability it is always a net loss dps right and you're on cooldown for 
27 seconds. So you need to make sure you're hitting this ability and making the most out of it because it's such a long cooldown. So if you get interrupted, that is a lot of your DPS gone, right? So make sure you hit this. Don't worry about always hitting it into combos. Sometimes there's an enemy that's just chasing away. And if you're good enough and you know, if you don't think you can catch them, but Moonlight Sonic is within their range. You can use a Moonlight Sonic to snipe some targets sometimes. I've done it. It's fine. It perfectly works. There's situational things and you'll learn as you play more. But know that Moonlight Sonic, as long as you're getting the cast off, that is good. Do not get CC'd during this. You will get CC'd. It's going to happen. But try not to. All right, the next ability on the list that I use for this build is Turning Slash. I love this ability. It's pretty badass, to be honest. Um, it makes you feel less of like an assassin and more like a fighter. Uh, just because of the super armor and the tenacity that's built into to, to turning slash if you if you know, obviously if you take tenacity here let me move it um so this ability is movement and damage i would base instead of the other ones where it's pure movement look at this one as more of a gap closer you want to use another movement ability before this one if you're super far away into turning slash to be able to close the gap and actually get some damage off of them now if there's a low health target near you and you know they can't get away but they're 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 casting and let's say it's a let's say it's a sorceress you can actually turning slash through her fire wave um that you that you'll see sorceresses do and that's just one example a lot of the times i'll find sorceresses and i'll usually just slash through the fucking wave that comes towards me if i know that i can combo them immediately after right? it depends on their blanks it depends on a lot of things but that's just one example of this as a gap closer uh i love this ability try it out see how it works for you i mean you see it on screen here uh you are locked into the direction that you choose though unlike um unlike spin cutter where spin cutter you get a little bit more freedom in each uh each usage this one you're you're kind of locked in so once you commit you're committed to it all right and the last normal ability that we're going to be talking about for this build is blitz rush this is your second bread and butter ability after moonlight sonic usually you're going to be comboing uh blitz rush into moonlight sonic especially if you know that they have no escapes uh you need it's much more reliable than moonlight sonic just because you're less vulnerable uh you still are vulnerable while casting this it's just you don't have to sit there and hold it down kind of like moonlight sonic which can be a little long uh, you definitely need to time Moonlight Sonic more so than Blitz Rush, but both work. And this ability is awesome. Abuse it at range. A lot of the times I like to call them, we'll talk about this in combos and situational things section. I like to dash and then get off a Blitz Rush real quick if I know they don't have any more movement abilities. You can catch people off guard with this. Um, a lot of people forget that you are, you are a melee player, but you do have ranged abilities. So definitely abuse this one. Okay, and now we're going to talk about uh, our awakening skill before we get to the death orb mechanic of death glade so quite simply your awakening skill is pretty pretty badass i'm not gonna lie you just can't miss it if you you can completely whiff this and it is so bad if you do you don't always need to use this in order to win unless you're playing against good opponents then you'll probably need to use your awakening i've won plenty of matches already without ever using this um you need to make sure they're cc'd chained and they do not have their dodge if you just yolo this shit you are going to whiff so much and you're going to look like a dumbass and you're going to feel terrible so, so there's sometimes you can i mean i'm not saying you shouldn't you should definitely try let me test the shit out of this ability there are times where you'll, you'll you'll surprise yourself you don't necessarily need to cc but you're more than likely going to miss if they're not cc'd right you rather just set this up for a guaranteed situation rather than take a risk right that's how i see it it's the risk to reward um but it's absolutely insane. You hit anybody, knocks them up in the air, basically look like Zoro, any anime swordsman. They take us, they take a fuck ton of damage, then they take some more damage and they're CC'd. Try to line up as many people as you can. Combo this, I'll show you a combo in a second. Works amazing with your death orb slash and uh, go from there. Okay, and the last thing that we are going to talk about today is actually going to be the death orb mechanic of the death blade. Now, I'm gonna read it to you. Uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna read it to you. If you want to read it, I'll have I'll keep it on screen if you want the details, but I'll just give you the TLDR. Each orb gives you more attack speed, more attack power, more uh, more mana recovery, more skill cooldown. Uh, all the way up to 20, 30, 45, and 50 percent, respectively. That's all you're reading from this little tooltip. However, this ability can be used in two separate ways. You can either consume the death orb to grant you a, an attack based off of how many death orbs you have consu you're, you're consuming or you can just run the entire uh uh you can run the entire uh bar to de depletion and just use the passive stats that you're given personally 
I love using the the attack that it gives. Um, however, if you miss set attack, you basically waste your entire resource bar and you have to generate it again. So do keep that in mind. At least when your uh, your, your 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 resource bar is depleting, you have empowered stats, and no matter what you do, as long as you're hitting somebody, you will be benefiting from it. So once again, risk reward. Two ways to use it. It's up to you. I'll show you combos where, that you can do right after this section. All right, guys, if you made it this far into the video, we are now going to go over combos. Now, I'll go over basic combos, but and then I'll probably show some arena footage of things that I've already done, and you can kind of pick that apart. I'll commentate over it, and you guys can figure it out, and then we'll wrap up the guide from there. But I'll give you guys a few combos that are just some things you're going to want to look for if your target has no dodge available. So let's start out with the most basic. It's going to be a dark axle into an upper slash or surprise attack. Uh, I think upper slash is better if you can. It's much more... The the surprise attack can sometimes be a little wonky in terms of the knockback, so I would definitely go with the upper slash. So it's going to be a dark axle, upper slash, blitz rush into moonlight sonic, into the death sentence if it's up, or you just death sentence uh, if your moonlight sonic is on cooldown. So what does it look like slowly? So we're going to dark axle, upper slash, blitz rush, and then moonlight sonic into this. Now, that's a lot of time. If you're actually able to get this whole combo off, that's fucking awesome, okay? Um, usually, this is going to be if you know you're not going to be CC'd. I'd be careful about full comboing if you are in the heat of, you know, like a lot of people are grouped up. Maybe skip the, uh, maybe don't use the death sentence and, you know, do a, uh, you can use a splint, spin cutter to come out. So, it would look something like this. And then you could spin cutter out if you see people coming, right? Or you could use one of these. There's a lot of different options. Now, if you want the full burst, if you have three death orbs up, this is what you're gonna do. This is this is my favorite combo right here. If you can hit this shit into uh, in in any fucking arena, oh my god, this this is the dopamine right here. Uh, and it, it it starts out with the dark. It start it always starts out the same. If you if you want to close the gap, it always starts out the same. Dark axle. Boom. And if any of that crits, it's so much damage. Like, that was a 30k regular hit if, you're, uh, if your death orb slash hits crits or anything. If any of this crits, it just does so much. And then you can keep going, obviously, with this. And there's a ton of combos. But that's basically your bread and butter. You're looking to set up that combo almost every single time. Um, now, I'm going to show... Th th that's, that's kind of it. Uh, you can do different variations of this. Like I said, Void Strike, I think, is also a thing if you if you do Upper Slash into Void Strike, but it's the the, 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 the the timing of it has to be perfect or almost perfect, so it's not as reliable, which is why I don't run Void Strike, right? Um, that's your bread and butter of combos right there. But I'm going to show you guys Arena Clips, and we'll kind of commentate over what's going on inside Arena Clip. One quick note to remember, I also did forget, at any point in that combo, if you can throw your Awakening skill in, uh, it's it's golden. It's even better. That's the one-shot combo. I did forget to mention that um, The combo that I did talk about where it was just you know the standard If you could throw awakening at any point into this that's the one shot Look at that 111k crit just from the awakening. So that is the one-shot combo if you can get it um, Do keep that in mind Okay, last side note your auto attack, this uh, this baby right here is actually pretty strong, um, and I recommend just using it as a filler. Whenever you don't have something, you're going to be keeping constant eyes on your cooldowns. You're not always going to be able to just line up your cooldowns. So whenever you need filler, auto attack. It's actually quite strong. Okay, guys, so in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about... I'm going to show you a couple clips that I got from PvPing, and I'm just going to show you application of combos what happens like during 3v3s and why it's not always going to work out the best and then we'll end with the big wombo combo uh clip at the very end and you guys can see the uh, almost the full potential of of this class and how you can almost instantly kill three people if if done correctly so quick combo and a switching targets this was a match that we played so i'll just play the clip first nice oops okay where was it? here we go here we go we start out into the upward slash, into the moonlight, right? I get the full comp. The only reason I moonlighted here is because I got a definite one, and I noticed there was another one close to me, and a third one that might step into it. So I, I used my AoE here. 
Now, this is where I noticed that this guy had no dash, and I actually uh, dodged out, went for the death sentence to try to get a, an AoE knockup on him, and then I was looking for my Blitz Rush, since that was the only other ability I had at this point that could kill him. And I was thinking, okay, if I can hit this, my my teammate might follow up on me, and or my if I get any lucky crits, I might be able to finish him out with my uh, throwing slash. So that's kind of how it played out. We get the CC on him. I get the Blitz Blutch on him, some autos. My teammate did come in, and then I was able to finish him off with the Turning Slash, right? So that's a quick combo into switching targets, right? So this is this is literally how you want to play the threes. You do your combo. You get off the Moonlight. I noticed he dashed out, so he's on cooldown. He can't dodge, right, uh, if you get him CC'd. So I just came over, CC'd him, kept him CC'd with the Blitz Rush, and then we just finish him off with whatever we got left, right? So that's just an easy situational awareness thing kind of um when you don't always have all of your cooldowns what you can mix and match to see what happens it's all about looking at what you have and seeing what you can do and follow up your teammates or just waiting it out and then going for the full the full combo right i tend to definitely be more of a button masher where i like to be on cooldowns so i'll always kind of try to figure out what i can do with the cooldowns that i have up rather than waiting it out depending on my health the next clip we have is a little bit of a double kill um this was actually, I'm pretty sure this was like kind of a lucky double kill, uh, considering the last, of, uh, I think I used the, the death orb slash to kill him here, but we'll watch it play out, right? They're all extremely low. So, I mean, this isn't in like an insane double kill, but a double kill nonetheless. So I had just respawned. So this double kill was lucky, mostly because uh, I actually fucked up. I wanted to hit this guy, but this guy actually dodged into my... Uh, into my death orb slash you could say i predicted it i'm gonna be honest i didn't i was actually aiming for the other guy double kill nonetheless how we start this off i knew this guy was on cooldown with his dodge so i went for him anyway and went for the moonlight slash without actually getting any um without getting any cc off right so i just went for it because i knew his cooldowns were down and then i had my 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 upward strike coming up so the three of them grouped up for an easy like chain cc right we even got the one guy with health. So this guy actually had, what, a third of his HP, 25% left. We actually almost got him killed, too. So this was almost a triple kill. Um, nothing too special, but just like a thought process of if you know people's dodge cooldowns, you actually could take a little bit more of a risk with uh, with just going with for the Moonlight Slash. I don't recommend doing this. I tend to make a bad habit of it, but it can work. It's not something bad. You just have to don't make a bad habit of it where it becomes con like unconscious that you do it, right? Um, I think we did this one. Did we? Hold on. Oh, this is how you follow up into somebody's moon, uh, into somebody else's CC, right? So I'm with my teammate here. We noticed that there's two guys low and my teammate's kind of in trouble. So I realized that I, I can help him out here. So I come in. He follows up a CC, and then I follow up with my Moonlight Slash. Just to show you that you don't always need your own cooldowns to make things happen, right? Um, that's just the point of this. This isn't like a sick play or anything at all. This is just understanding that you can play around your teammate's CC, right? So look at this. He CCs them, and I get a full Moonlight Slash of two of them. If any of, if that crit, they were both dead. Unfortunately, we didn't get any crits there, but... C'est la vie. And then this is a clip where I get a triple kill. They're all extremely low. Um, but the thing I want to point out in this triple kill is that, uh... Not many classes can move like I just did in this clip. Um, and I think this is one of the greatest things about uh, Deathblade is your mobility. So just watch this. So I, I spot the first one. He just goes down instantly. That's like whatever. Okay. Then we keep closing the gap. Get one. That's what I was talking about earlier where you could just, you could just catch someone off guard if you have the right distance. Just instantly Moonlight Slash them. I could have probably just gone for the Blitz, but we're so low on time here. I just went for whatever came reactively, and that was the Moonlight Slash, right? And then I keep using the rest of my movement abilities to just keep moving forward. And I'm already... Oh, look at this. I'm already on the other side. I had just spawned, and I got a triple kill literally just using all of my movement abilities to the other side of the map where they were trying to play safe, right? So just this is just a clip to show you the, uh, the absolutely insane mobility um, and catch-out potential of the Demon Blade when everyone's low. <laughs> and then this is the big combo i'm I, I i didn't have awakening here but if i had awakening here this was guaranteed the best combo that i think you could probably pull off with crits um just watch their hp on the side here CC. i was also using a slightly different build at the time uh but the point still stands 
Which is why you see the Maelstrom. So let's look at that again. I, what did we do here? We set ourselves up. They 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 stacked up, which is a bad idea. And I uh, I have upward strike, so I get a three man upward strike into the immediate death orb slash into the into the abyssal strike or whatever the fuck this thing is called. Dark axle, sorry. Into my engage into a three man. Full crit! Look how much this thing is critting. I have not. This doesn't happen very often. Like multiple ticks are critting so much. Oh my if I had three more seconds, this would have been the easiest triple kill in my life, and probably the best one. But also, look at their HP over here. If you want to see the full combo in effect, if Awakening was part of this, it was just over. So, uh, that is the potential of Deathblade. Now, I hope this guide helped you guys. No one saw that. I hope this guide helped you guys. Uh, if you got any value of this, I stream every day on Twitch. Come ask me some questions. Subscribe to the channel. I put content out on... Uh, I'm starting to put out content on most MMOs. I used to play New World. Right now, I'm going through my Lost Ark phase. Uh, so you can expect most Lost Ark content to be in the near future. And then maybe some other MMO content after that. Uh, but it's been a pleasure, guys. And thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on Twitch. And uh, take care. Good luck in the arena.